to my YouTube channel. I'm your host. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Today I am answering one of the saddest and most heartbreaking questions that I've been sent uh, to date. And I've been doing this for a little while now. Can narcissistic abuse kill me? Before I get into answering this question, I really want you to think about the question that you're asking. And if this is you, if you find yourself asking this question, that alone should indicate that something really needs to change in your situation. Number one, you can identify the type of abuse that you're enduring. And number two, it's severe enough that you are asking if this can have fatal consequences and that should start indicating i need to make a change right i need to do something about this but given the seriousness of the question i do want to answer it i do want to answer it fully um so number one when you're with a narcissist we know that there's a ton of emotional damage that you are going to sustain there's psychological trauma and that involves gaslighting manipulation emotional manipulation and that all added together can result in severe psychological trauma and when we talk about that by itself should be noted that most people who come out of narcissistic abuse have some form of PTSD or CPTSD and that carries severe consequences as well especially if it is not um, addressed correctly if it is not treated appropriately second of all you're probably going to experience a lot of isolation and loneliness right and that worsens the emotional distress that I was just mentioning before and um, the National Domestic Violence Hotline found that 77% of survivors of any type of abuse reported experiencing ex anxiety and 75% reported depression as a result of emotional abuse and this is simply going to heighten the isolation and loneliness that you are feeling because the depression is not going to make you want to go out. The anxiety is not going to make you want to talk about your situation. It's going to feel so overwhelming that you just don't deal with it. You want to just kind of bury your head in the sand. And that leads to these cycles repeating themselves over and over without any intervention. Of course, there's also going to be a loss of self-esteem, which can again lead to decisions that you would otherwise make or not make be being off because you feel so bad about yourself you're not able to uh, appropriately advocate for yourself you're not uh, appropriately able to make decisions that would lead to not only a better outcome but the actual well-being the health of your life of your finances of your children you for all intents and purposes are doing the very very best that you can and making the decisions appropriately but you need to understand there is a part of you that has more or less been hijacked by the narcissist and you are actually making decisions that are best for the narcissist and not for your own life being with a narcissist especially for a very long period of time can also cause cognitive impairment again your your physical ability in your brain to make decisions your physical ability to remember to concentrate um, to advocate for yourself again these things are all going to be impaired due to the psychological trauma that you are experiencing dissociation is also a very common defense mechanism that a lot of victims of narcissistic abuse also find themselves suffering from which just essentially means that you disconnect from your reality so this not only uh, allows you to not remember a lot of the trauma and the abuse that you're experiencing and not really face those uh, instances head on but this can also cause a disrupt in your daily functioning in your daily life you are gonna go run an errand you were gonna go complete a task at work and that got interrupted because of the this dissociation this doesn't just happen when you're in a moment of trauma when you're in a moment of high stress this can actually become just the norm of which you experience your life and you are more or less just a waking zombie you're also going to find yourself having a lot of problem trusting other people, which again 
makes it difficult to advocate for yourself because if you don't trust that somebody could have your best interest in mind, it makes it very difficult to report the things that you're experiencing, to go out and hire an attorney, to hire a coach or a therapist or somebody else who can help lead you out of the situation because you're not wanting to trust somebody. Again, the the cutting off of all of these avenues is absolutely intentional that the narcissist is doing this on purpose. And number two, leaving you in this cycle of abuse absolutely does have grave consequences. I'm going to cover the physical consequences of narcissistic abuse last. I just want you to understand this is a slow death. This is a slow dying of who you truly are, of your identity, of your values, of your goals, of your dreams, of your hopes, of your connection to other people. And that ultimately does result in a multitude of tiny deaths. So let's move on to finances. Obviously, economic control is something that the narcissist strives to have in every single situation. The National Network to End Domestic Violence reported that financial abuse was occurring in 99% of all physical domestic violence cases, meaning in if there was physical abuse happening, they're almost guaranteed 99% of the time. There was also financial abuse occurring towards that person in that household. So control of finances makes it feel like your options are very, very limited and that there's no way to appropriately advocate for yourself, especially if the narcissist is well off or has means because you can start to come up with these scenarios that the narcissist has likely fed to you that they're gonna hire a great attorney, you're not gonna be able to advocate for yourself, you're not gonna be able to fight against them, and this, again, prolongs the cycle of you not doing anything to interrupt it or to break it. It can also have a career impact. Obviously, as I was mentioning before, your cognitive ability is going to be impaired while you are undergoing narcissistic abuse and even while you're recovering from that kind of trauma. But the Corporate Alliance to End Partner Violence actually found that 60% of people who were in some sort of violent situation, this does not need to just be physically violent, uh, found that 60% of people also had their careers impacted. In other words, if you are with a narcissist, there's a 60% chance that your career is also going to be impacted. The narcissist will find th things for you to do instead of working. You need to take care of the kids or they ruined your day and so now you need to spend all day thinking about how you can make it up to the narcissist. The narcissist won't let you have, again, a car or another means financially to be able to get to work maybe you have to quit your job because the narcissist is calling in maybe there's court proceedings and they're constantly harassing you by taking you back to court it makes it impossible for you to work there's a million different ways that your career can be impacted by a narcissist but statistically speaking and again we know these statistics are highly underreported 60 percent of the time your career is going to be impacted as well resulting in further financial damage done by the narcissistic relationship that you find yourself in. Not to mention the fact that recovering from this type of abuse is an investment and you are going to have to invest in yourself in order to fully heal. The National Domestic Violence Hotline has found that emotional abuse survivors spend about $1,000 a month recovering from this type of abuse. Needless to say that the longer the abuse goes on, the more things that you are going to have to not only recover from because of the things happening to you, but the belief system that's being ingrained in you is becoming further entrenched. That typically takes longer to undo as well. It's likely that you are going to have a spiritual disconnection as well. Again, this goes back to the loss of self-identity. The spirituality and clinical practice is a journal that covers emotional and mental abuse and they found that narcissistic abuse can lead to profound loss of self identity and spiritual disconnection a distrust in god and religious institutions as a whole this is especially true if you are with a spiritually abusive narcissist this type of narcissist will use whatever religion you find yourself a part of, your sacred scripts, in order to further manipulate you, get you to change 
your belief and before you know it you've actually made them god in your situation what they say is what goes not what the actual god says but what the narcissist says their position has usurped the position that god should have in your life and that leads to a significant spiritual dis dissociation and that leads to further loss of self-identity the international journal of psychology and behavioral sciences found that many survivors of emotional and mental abuse also report feelings of hopelessness regarding their spiritual journey not just in general but in their spiritual journey so not just saying i don't believe in god or i don't trust god but having no hope for rebuilding or repairing that road or finding any place where uh, a spiritual life would somehow mesh with the one that they have built now there's another journal called religions and uh, according to a study that they ran survivors of specifically narcissistic abuse question their values and beliefs and that impacts their spiritual growth as well so you can see that there are a million different little deaths that you're going to experience during your journey of the narcissistic abuse itself but also recovering from it and i think it's really important to look at this question that i'm being asked to answer through through a multitude of lenses because the truth is dying is not a one-time act there's a thousand little deaths that you're going to die on this journey if you don't intervene in this cycle and again sooner rather than later is of course better i do want to cover the physical issues that come along with narcissistic abuse of course you're going to experience chronic stress right you're going to experience the emotional distress from this type of abuse and that's linked to a multitude of health issues and again that slow death of your body is it's not just a one-time thing okay there's going to be sleep disturbances anxiety emotional turmoil of course we know that these things result in sleep disturbances and that affects your overall health a ton there are some doctors who believe that sleep is the number one indicator of how healthy your life is going to be this has nothing to do with the disease this is about health so not only is the lack of sleep obviously going to cause diseases but it's also impacting the quality of life that you're going to have in your waking life as well chronic stress also weakens your immune system lack of sleep weakens your immune system this makes your body obviously more vulnerable to actual infectious diseases and not to mention that when you don't feel good in your body you also don't feel good in your mind right and so if you're not making good decisions it leads to a weakening of your, your immune system when you don't feel good in your body it leads to bad decisions or not making clear thinking decisions rational decisions long-term uh, goal-oriented decisions and so all of this is kind of one cycle after another it just ropes every single thing in which is why i always tell people if you think that you can compartmentalize this kind of abuse you've already started the cycle of lying to yourself about what you're actually going through back onto the physical health things substance abuse is extremely high not just in narcissists but in individuals recovering from narcissistic abuse Okay, this is a coping mechanism, and obviously substance abuse is going to have severe physical, psychological consequences. Okay, overusing drugs, alcohol, even prescription kind that are there to help you can be used ultimately as a crutch, and you can become physically addicted to these substances to make you feel like you are quelling something when really you're just escaping reality and not dealing with it with the situation fully and finally of course self-harm and suicidal behavior you know the emotional pain that has been inflicted upon you by the narcissist can lead to thoughts of suicide or self-harm which of course are going to be life-threatening and there are many studies that already show people who experience emotional abuse are at a much higher risk of self-harm and suicide attempts than a, somebody who is under a lot of stress but is not experiencing emotional or psychological trauma these are the things that can happen to you internally but it is important to note that if you are physically living residing with a narcissist 
they are completely unstable and you cannot predict what they are going to do. While a lot of their patterns of behavior do follow certain cycles, it is important to note that those things get stronger every time they repeat a cycle and you don't know what the narcissist is capable of. If you think that the narcissist would never harm your children or harm you physically, I propose keeping in mind that you may not be assessing the situation correctly or fully. Because of the psychological trauma, because of the emotional trauma, and the things that I've already listed in this video, it's impossible for you to have a rational, full, and complete picture of what's going on. I always encourage my clients that the first time there are threats, believe the narcissist. Believe them. Because not believing the narcissist when they make a threat against you can really result in irreparable damage. And you need to file a report, a police report, a, a, an injunction, whatever it is that you have evidence to do that at that moment. But at the bare minimum, a police report needs to be made. One of the sad things about narcissistic abuse is that the narcissist, again, has more or less hijacked your decision-making ability and you make decisions based on things that are good for the narcissist, not on what's good for you. This leads a lot of people to be thinking about, I call the police, then the narcissist is gonna retaliate. Or if I call the police, then the narcissist is gonna use that against me. The court is gonna think I'm lying. And you come up with reasons to not advocate for yourself. I am telling you that advocating for yourself correctly will lead to your freedom. I have helped hundreds of people get free from narcissistic abuse, even in cases where the narcissist is clearly a danger physically to both the my client and their children or other family members. And it's really important that you do report these things, that you keep documentation so that you can build your case. But you can't do that if you never start reporting, if you don't start sharing your story, if you don't start getting real about the situation that you're living in. Well, I think this is the saddest question I've been asked to answer on my channel this channel is for the masses you know i try to do topics video topics that are going to speak to a multitude of people when i don't know the details of their situation and i'm trying to give advice that would help them m advocate for themselves and make decisions that are appropriate for their future for their life and in this situation, I really hope it comes across crystal clear that you need to get out of this situation. This is not something that you can just sit around to wait and see if the narcissist is gonna get healthy, if they're going to change. It's a fair assumption to say they are going to change and it is going to be for the worse. I always say the least amount of abuse that you're ever gonna experience is the one today. If you stay with the narcissist, tomorrow's abuse is gonna get worse and the next day and the next day because they are addicts. Of course, it has spiritual roots, but if you don't understand, they are an addict for your energy and all sorts of your energy. That's why if you think they're just gonna take your finances or they're just gonna take your emotional energy or whatever the boundary is that you think is there, it's not true. They're coming for it all. They are going to take over more and more and more because they are an addict, because this is the way that their brain is wired. And so the least amount of ex abuse you're going to experience is the abuse you're experiencing today. And for that reason, I hope you will take the next step to get free. If you need help and support taking the next steps, I want you to text me the word detox to 512-677-9322 and see if you're a good fit for my detox intensive. You can also email me if you're outside of the United States. And if those don't seem like they're a good fit for you, then I want you to do one step. Take one step today to advocate for yourself. One small step can lead to another and another and another, just as the cycle of abuse can, so can the cycle of breaking that and getting free.